All right, step one, we spawn the child. Step two, we got to communicate with the child. So the way I want to work it is I want the parent to be the server, child connects to the parent, and then the parent sends commands to the child. So we need networking stuff in here. Create a little header source pair in here. Again, uh, one of our main goals is to quarantine. Quarantine the boost stuff from the rest of our stuff because it just it just blows up your compile times a lot. We want to put it in core because it's going to be accessed by both the window app and the console sandbox. So we're going to create like two interfaces here. The, the client interface and the server interface. Now since the core is all namespaced up, let's let's continue that practice here. And we're going to do class i server. Well, you know, eventually the server is going to send commands to the client, but to start off, let's uh, like let's not do any of that hokey pokey and let's virtual. So I think the only thing we really need to start off with is maybe a uh, maybe just a destructor. And uh, we can do the same for the client. Include memory in here, and we're gonna do the same thing we did before. We're gonna have our our little factory functions. So a little static make function for the server and one for the client. Okay. So now the fun part, implementing this stuff. All right. So we include the header definition file in here, and now now we need uh, we need ACO because that's what we're gonna be using for networking, right? All right. So let's add a new item. We'll call this one wrap. I'll put this one in a separate file because it's maybe maybe it's a little more involved. I don't know. All right. So because ACO obviously has a WinSock, which has a bunch of Windows stuff, uh, we need to include our Windows stuff first, so that all of our defines and everything, our, our disables, that all gets prioritized. But here's the thing. So my implementation of Chillwin disables a bunch of stuff. If you recall, all this stuff. Unfortunately, we need a little bit of this sauce for when we're doing WinSock. So we got to go full WinTard mode. But just in this little spot here, just, just in net.cpp. That's the only thing that's going to include wrap ACO. Again, we like to keep, we like to keep the cancer quarantined. Now, we're going to include boost.aco, but as is the custom, boost likes to put a bunch of code that just sends the compiler into a hissy fit. So we're going to have to tell the compiler to calm its tits a bit. Here we go. All right, so that's good for our stuff. Now in here, we can include that. Then you want to give me some of my, my favorite little shortcuts here. And let's get to business. Hmm, so you start with your boy, the server, and we really just want to make the, uh, the constructor for this bad boy. Well, not just the constructor. We also need the, the private data, the stuff that makes it go burr. You really only need two bad boys here. You need the context and you need the socket. Uh, you know, I did a I did a bunch of videos on ACO, so if you're not familiar, you can check those out or not. Let's do it uh, now for the server. So we could do TCP acceptor. We create an acceptor here. Acceptor. Pass it the IOC context. Let's make an endpoint. That is going to be we'll do the version four, and we'll make our that's our port number that you have to connect to. And then we will call accept. Acceptor.accept. Into our socket, the other piece of member data. And this is going to block until someone connects to this port. Now the client is going to be, you know, much the same story here. Member data starting off the same. It's going to diverge at some point, but uh, not right now. Not right now. And I'm hard coding in stuff like the port number and whatever. It don't matter. Um, this is just a little. This is a little funsies that we're having here. So we're going to use the TCP resolver to resolve the endpoint that we want to connect to. We'll do that synchronously. It's going to be the loopback address. I noticed that if you put in here localhost, takes a hell of a lot longer to resolve. If you just put the loopback address directly, it resolves instantly. So that's what we're going to do. And then we're just going to use the synchronous connect because we want to block until we have the connection and we're ready to go. Then we'll go asynchronous. So we connect to our resolved endpoint and uh, yeah, there you go. All right, so that's a beaut. What are we missing? Ah, yes, uh, we need we need the actual 
factory functions that are going to make these concrete instances for us. So that's like this, and like this, I would think, yeah, okay, sweet. Now we just got to actually use this stuff from both sides of our little our little system here. So, spawn the child. Just going to have to include some of this trash here. Include core source net net dot a auto p p server ah oh, i i forgot my p i got a little p fetish here all right serve i server i got an ice fetish too i server ah net i server yes namespacing make there you go so we do that and then this is going to block until we get a connection so then we can do child connected and then we're gonna sleep for two seconds after that and then we're gonna get the heck out of dodge sweet all right now on the other side on the windows app so i this is we, it's gonna run main it's gonna go into generator coral mode so we'll put all our logic in here and uh, i guess we can leave all this trash in here but before we get started well let's include net in here and then up here we will before we do anything do auto p client is equal to net i client make there we go so that will connect to the service before it starts doing its thing it does not saying anything about connecting it's also not killing the thing it just kind of yeah so this bad boy ain't connecting to this bad boy. It's a bit of a problem. And this is the fun thing that you have working with, you know, multiple projects, especially when like one tool is spawning another tool as like a child process. And then you run it. It tries to build the minimal. It says, ah, well, you're running this executable. You're not running this one. So why would I build this one? Ah, uh, well, this one depends on this one. Yeah, but I didn't know that. I'm just a dumb IDE. So why don't you tell it? You can do this. It's okay. You know, even though this one doesn't actually consume any, like, libraries or anything, symbols, it's still okay to add a reference in here. I'll allow it. So if we add the reference, now it's going to try to build, to try and build your boy window app. Oh, except, okay, now when it tried to build it, it was like, oh, wait, actually, no, I'm not going to let you run. So, there's a problem, and that is... For this, I think for only this file here, for only this file here, we got this additional option slash await. And that allows us to use the old busted experimental coroutines, which is what CPP Coro uses. Okay, cool. So we set that flag and then we're allowed to use the old busted ones. The only thing is that the compiler doesn't like it when you use the old busted ones and then you try to use the new hotness. And the new hotness is being used by... ACO, as you know, it's got a lot of coroutine stuff in there, and it's got the real shit. It don't got the old busted shit. And so now they're like, well, don't do that. Don't mix them. But I'm like, I want to mix them. Trust me, bro. I'm just, is this for funsies? I'm not going to like make any kind of medical equipment here that's going to, you know, have someone's life hanging in the balance. It's just a little funsies for YouTube. It's not that deep. So what we can do is in net.cpp, we can say, okay, before we call, before we include ACO, we're going to little, do a little spin special spice spicy define here allow coroutine abi mismatch and this is gonna somehow tell the linker i don't know how this works with the linker if the preprocessor goes to, i don't know how it works but the, it's gonna make everyone happy everyone's gonna you're, you're gonna have a good time and then when we run it now it says child spawned child connected and then it does all the good stuff and everyone's happy so we have we have established a tcp ip connection between your boy console sandbox and your boy window app and now we can start on the real goodness